I want to share with you and continue very briefly what I left off last uh, week. I am continuing this and uh, I want to leave with the, you with this word. The series that I am continuing is titled Purposes, Priorities and Pursuits. You know, I want you to know my prayer for you is like you know the back of your palm that you will know at the end of 23 and as you step into 24 what is the purpose of God into your life? Therefore knowing the purpose what ought to be your priorities and knowing your priorities that are according to God's purpose into your life what would your pursuit be? Don't take it too casually. Your eternity, let me say it again, your eternity depends on this. The author of the book, very famous book, Purpose Driven Life, and also Miles Monroe, both of them echo this statement saying, the greatest tragedy that can happen to a man is not mere death, but the greatest tragedy that can happen to you, even while you are living, is when you do not know the reason why you are living. Why I said this could impact your eternity? Why did I say that you knowing your purpose, prioritizing for that purpose, and then pursuing that purpose like there is no tomorrow? Is because I want to read that to you so that we establish our values here. Why should I know about my purpose? Why should I have priorities in my life according to that purpose? And why knowing it and having it doesn't suffice it unless I pursue it. That means unless I follow it, unless I chase it with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my strength, I will not be able to do it. But the question is why? I want to read to you from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, please. This is one of the pastoral epistles of Timothy, written during the end of the life of Paul the Apostle. And he writes it like this in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. He is giving a testimony of his life. He says, I have fought the good fight. He says, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. What an amazing, bold, confident statement. I don't know how many would be able to tell this at the end of our lives. Only two out of three leaders in the Bible, and global statistics also say, two out of every third leader, only two out of every third leader finished it well. You know, we are not preparing only to finish by hook or by crook. We are trying to finish well, Jesus said it is finished and only the second person in the new covenant who had the courage to say that I have finished is Paul the Apostle. And our prayer is that each of us sitting here, we would not end up that, okay, we also lived on the planet earth. We did not end up in hell, but we ended up in heaven in eternity. That's not the only reason why you and I need to know our purpose, set our priorities, Pursue it like there is not another day is written in the next verse, please. He says, because I have done that, finally, can I have it in the KJV, please? Because that word finally is not there, I think, in the KJV, if I'm not mistaken. It says, therefore, uh, because what I did in the previous verse, he says, because I finished it, because I fought a good faith, because I a good fight, because I have kept my faith, he said, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day, not to me only, but unto them also that love is appearing. This crown, salvation is for everyone who believes, which is what I shared. But this crown is for those who finish and finish it well. When we go into heaven, I think that's the reason what we are going to give accountable. Account, we are going to give an account to God for what we did 
for the purpose that he purposed into our lives even before eternity began. Christian life is a very responsible life and that is what we've been searching. And I am preparing you as a pastor, not only that you will receive a crown in heaven. If you and I want this crown in heaven, let me tell you, you got to be a person that will testify either like the Lord Jesus, it is finished, or like Paul in that standard saying, I have finished my race, I have fought a good fight, I have kept the faith. Then you qualify, not for a mere entrance into heaven. When you enter into heaven, you receive a crown. But in between here and there, not only for the sake of the crown, when you fulfill your purpose, there is going to be nations that are going to be blessed. I just returned last night from Sri Lanka. And why I share this testimony, I was talking along with uh, Brother Augustine Jabakumar who has come here, stalwart in the mission world. He invited me and gave me an opportunity to talk into the life of 35 some of the influential leaders so that they could sit and strategize how to win this island nation over for God. And when I was sitting and ministering there, I tell you, I, I was so indebted to God, so grateful to God that God raised me up because I know my purpose, I have my priorities right, and I pursue those priorities like there is not another day. But God's purpose for me is different from God's purpose for you. That will not contradict, but it only complements when we are in the church together. When you and I are working together, we never compete with each other. But when you and I come together, we with my talent, you with your giftings, what happens is synergy takes place and one will chase a thousand and two will chase a ten thousand. We are here to make a difference in the world. Otherwise, God wouldn't have made you a salt. We are here to make a difference in the world. Otherwise, God wouldn't have made you a light. He would have simply shined the light like the people of Israel. When they lived in Egypt, they were living in the land of Goshen. And when whole darkness came upon the entire Egypt, Israel living in Goshen were living in light. You are not living in light. You are the light. So in this pursuit of learning, I was talking about how in the book of Colossians, but before that, please be reminded that this purpose was established before you were born, before creation was made in Christ Jesus. God has determined this purpose. If there's any reason that you and I need to live on this planet Earth, it is for God and for the purposes of God. While reading the epistle of Colossians, I stopped there by saying, if you will read Verse 9, we read the first phrase only, saying, For this cause, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. We won't read that verse, just to remind you. Paul says there, From the day I heard, I don't cease to pray. I have two questions. What did you hear? What did you pray? Right? Question, simple question, has simple answers. Amen. What did you hear, Paul, about the Colossi people that you prayed? But before that, I want us to understand this prayer has two parts. Like last time I was talking about the parable of the sower, I'm so blessed with what I shared. You know, the good ground, the fourth ground, the good ground overcame the devil, the enemy of the first ground, overcame offenses, the enemy of the second ground, overcame worry of the world, pleasures of this world, deceitfulness of riches. All this the, the good ground overcame. And after becoming the good ground, somewhere only 30 on 100. That's the tragedy. The tragedy is not ending up as the one, two on the third ground. The real tragedy is when you are the fourth ground, when you can be a hundred, you being 30 fruitful is actually 70% unfruitful. That's how I challenge my life, brother. I don't only look at what has been accomplished. My eyes, the fo my focus of my eyes is always on what is still yet to be done. And here I pray that you will prepare yourself, not only merely as a good ground, but as a good ground that brings forth hundredfold fruit. That means you bring forth fruit according to the full 
God potential in the inside of you. But in this purpose, before we see what Paul prayed for, let us see what Paul heard about the Colossi church. Everything what her, Paul heard about every church was not good news. What did he hear about Corinthian church? He said, I heard you fellows are drinking in the church. He said, I heard you fellows are fighting within the church. He said, I heard there is adultery, which is so uncommon even in the world, within the church. He didn't hear good things. But what did he hear about the Colossian church? Verse chapter 1, we will go. Verse 3, I'm talking about prayer. Let me just say this here. You know, since the day in verse 9, we won't read it, he says, Without ceasing, I pray for you. I want you to just make a mental note. He said, I pray without ceasing. Right? Verse 9. Without ceasing. Okay, take the verse off, please. That means, if you want to know this, there is, the prayer should be without ceasing. It's not an ordinary prayer. But then, in verse 3, he says, We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. There is something here. There is a perpetual prayer and there is a specific prayer prayed here. I'll come to that a little later, but let me come to the verse 4. He says, I am always praying for you since the day I heard of your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, Paul the Apostle, I love the prayers of Paul. You know, many a times our prayers are so pathetic. Now, don't blame yourself too much there because when you do not have a biblical knowledge of who you are, then your prayers are not for who you are. Many a times our prayers are only for what we need. But when you realize who you are, like Paul realized, just read the prayers of Paul, what he prayed for the Ephesian church in chapter 1 and chapter 3. Read the prayer that he prayed for the Colossian church in chapter 1. It is absolutely different. God found it so amazing. That prayer of Paul, led by the Holy Spirit, became the word of God for you and I. But Paul tells us here, since the day I heard of your faith, this is amazing. He says, since I heard of your faith, I started praying for you. Lovely. That means what he heard about them was unlike what he heard about the Corinthian church. He heard about their faith and he says, love for all the saints. Now, if I am a pastor, a conventional pastor, many a times we spend our time praying for the crying babies. Now, don't get me wrong, please. When I, what I mean by crying babies is people who have uh, needs in their life. Normally a parent, when they have four children uh, uh, with an age difference of one year, in today's world it is unheard of, but our grandmothers and great-grandfathers, it was like, you know, the children, they had 11 or 12 each gap, age gap would be one or two, one or two, like staircase. <laughs> right? They did amazing. So if they had, because at that time, my mom, five, we all are only the age difference of two, one and a half, two, one and a half. We ourselves were like one staircase there, like a podium for price distribution. And how did my mother take care of us, five of us? She would not take care of those who are quiet. If one child starts crying, the immediate attention of the mother is to the crying child. You, you understand my point, right? In the same way, many a times we pray as pastors and also as people of God is mostly for the need that is crying the loudest. Whichever child is crying the loudest gets the uh, candy. Why? To quieten them. In Indian context, it's a slap. <laughs> right? But now we don't because according to the Bible, you don't beat your child. You may correct your child. You may spank your child. What is spanking? You should have attended the marriage seminar. Somebody is wondering, what is spanking? You missed it. But anyway, Pastor Raymond, his wife, Pastor Sneha, and many others have attended. You can learn from them. Real parenting, the biblical way. All right? Coming back to this, usually we look at that. But look at Paul. His prayer was Holy Spirit led, Holy Spirit filled. But he heard of their faith. He didn't hear about a fighting like they heard about the Corinthian church. If I was Paul, 
I wouldn't have prayed for Colossians. Oh, this is a bunch. Oh, excellent faith. I am hearing about your faith. Where? Far and wide. I will stop praying for them. You know why? They're doing good if they have faith. But if there is somebody, they are living in unbelief. They are not coming to the church. What we do? The whole focus of attention goes, somehow bring them, Lord. I bind the devil. I bind the devil. I set them free. Devil will say, Srini, stop praying. I am not holding them. You know, when the Bible says he heard of their faith, it was not an ordinary faith. You know, because if somebody has to talk about your faith in a neighboring town, that must be an outstanding faith. We all have faith, right? Uh, but we have a measure of faith. Now, don't take faith very easy. By faith, we are saved. By faith, we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. By the same faith, you move the mountains. By faith, miracles happen. By faith, you cast out demons. If this Colossi church had a basic faith in Jesus, they would not have been talked about far and wide. If their faith was spoken of far and wide, then I want to paint a picture of the, Cor the, the Colossian church. It was a church where miracles were a daily happening. It was a church that was moving the mountains. It was a church that was casting out the demons. By faith they were living. By faith they were pleasing the Almighty God. Their faith was so strong that Paul heard it far away. Can I hear an amen? Even though he heard about their amazing faith, yet he says two times, from the time I heard of your faith, I am praying for you without ceasing. I am wondering, why should you pray, Paul? Leave them alone. They are okay, right? Take care of the crying babies. That's how we think. But not only they had faith, but I love that uh, continuing verse he says, and love to all the saints. I love this Colossian church. See, there are certain ministers and believers, amazing faith, more on the ministry side. You know, they walk in miracles, they walk in anointing. Get the words, please. And if you will go near them, you will not see an iota of love in their lives. And, and you know what? You want to enjoy them from a distance. They are like a museum. Monument. You can't go near. You have, there will be barricades, historical monument. Do not touch. Like these people are there. Awesome miracle. They will cast out any demon. But you go near them, there's no love. But this Colossian church, see there. On the one side, they had faith to move the mountain and they had love. Say after me, love. love. Now, this is not an easy love. A love for all saints. This is where the real catch is. You know, to love is easy. To love is easy. To love all, not easy. And this church, they, it, the race did not determine it. Ethnicity did not determine it. Language did not determine it. Food preference did not determine it. Their love was for all. Can I hear an amen? amen? That's why I say, you know, when we talk about missions, missions is not about a country, a tribe, my language, your language. Missions is love for all. Amen? amen? Come on, are you clapping for the Lord? We should do that. But this Colossian church, it's amazing. I'm, I'm wondering, man, I want to be a pastor of this church. God said, shut up. I said, why, why, Lord, should I not desire? Make your church like that. Wow, at least three people are here. <laughs> why don't we become like that? Faith to move the mountain, love for all saints. You know, when you say, I love somebody, your joy becomes my joy. Your pain becomes my pain. Can I hear an Amen. You know, we are living in a doggy dog world where love is very temporal. Love is kind of become very, you know, what is the word to say? In Hindi, I'm getting it. Uh, going to India more, many times has made me more matlabi. What do you say in English? Selfish. Or it, 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 it is for reasons. If I need something, oh boy, I'm all loving to you. Self-serving. Self, uh, hallelujah. Very rarely I don't get the word, but it's okay. Somebody must be praying for my English. <laughs> self-absorbing, self-everything. You know, if it is going to serve me, then I will love you. It's easy to love somebody whom you like, but to love all is godly. It's to love nations. I was in Sri Lanka. The leaders later, they met me and they said, Srini, we want to thank you. I said, why? 
I said, I'm just doing what God wanted me to. I'm doing because God did this for me. They said, no, I, we appreciate you for coming, doing it, for loving our country. I said, man, that is not strange. That's what God did. God so loved the world. And we ought to love each other like God loved us. Can I hear an amen? amen. Old Testament said, love your neighbor as yourself. Then the, the Lord Jesus Christ said, love them as I have loved you. You know, Good Samaritan is no more an example for me. Because Good Samaritan loved his person like based on the Old Testament, but you and I ought to love each other like the Lord Jesus Christ. That means you not only give yours, Good Samaritan gave his, Jesus gave himself. Amen? And, and, and this Colossi church loved, and yet Paul the Apostle says, I heard of your faith, I heard of your love for all, and yet I am praying for you without ceasing. Made me even more inquisitive. Not only they had this, but very quickly I will run you through that. Let's come to the verse 6, please. This was an amazing church. He says, which has come to you. He's talking about the gospel, but I want to bring the focus of attention to this. As it is talking about the gospel in the verse 5, the word of God which has brought forth fruit. And as it is also in all the world is bringing forth fruit, as it is also among you, since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. Let me just fleetingly make a reference here. That word, you knew the grace. Today, if you are aware of the teachings going around in the world, especially on the grace of God, people have abused it, people have misinterpreted it, they call it hyper grace. They call it that. For me, there's nothing. There is only the grace of God. Can I hear an amen? amen? And grace of God for a human mind is ridiculous. Because God can pick a sinner who could have been a murderer, but still God will forgive him. You know why? Because Jesus paid the price. That's the grace of God. If the grace can forgive you, grace can forgive anybody. But here, when the Bible says they knew the grace in truth, that's the key here. That means every church, that word new, is a word from Greek. They had two words for knowledge, gnosis, epignosis. Gnosis, gnosis is experiential knowledge. I dropped the cap here down, it fell down. Anybody can say that it is the theory of gravity, right? Gravity took it down. This is gnosis. But here that word used is called epignosis. Epignosis means spiritual knowledge. You know, your knowledge of Jesus is not a mere mental knowledge. It is a spiritual knowledge. When you gain this spiritual knowledge, there is an effect in your life. All right? What is that effect? Like tomorrow when you come to grill and chill, if you want to know the effect part, go put your hand on the coal. What will happen when you touch the coal? Something happens, right? Something, what, what happens? You feel the heat. It will burn you. Don't do that literally. Okay, I'm just saying it as an example. In the same way, when you have this epignosis, which Paul prayed for all the Colossian church, don't discount yourself. That word epignosis, when you have the spiritual knowledge, it says it directly alters your spiritual course of living. Can I say that again? When you have this kind of knowledge, it changes your spiritual life. That means if it is not changing you spiritually, you are still in the gnosis and you have not come to the epignosis. When it says it will change your way of living, it will change your thinking, it will change your speaking, it will change your walking, it will change your priorities, it will change the way you Worship God, it will change the way you live here, it will change you completely. And this Colossian church had an epignosis, revelation of the grace of God in truth. I love that word, everybody just for to understand the emphasis, say after me, in truth. In truth. truth is the word of God. That means their revelation of the grace was word based. What a church, man. I love that. You know, I, I am for anything that is word-based. And this is a Colossian church. And, 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 and I'm telling you, 
this is an amazing model that we can model ourselves but yet this church had faith this church had love for all this church had revelation of the grace according to the word yet paul says i'm praying for you i'm wondering what are you praying paul actually i would have never prayed for them if my congregation for like this because we always pray for the perishing world we pray for jerusalem i'm not saying it's wrong but please don't pray only for jerusalem pray for the perishing world also people are perishing all over the world god so loved the world can i hear an amen, amen. when i say this people think i'm anti semitic i am not i am only saying man god's heart beats for the whole world and you should say a good amen. amen they had all of this final thing verse seven, please he says this is all what he heard about colossi church i don't know if these three is there in us or no i leave it to you faith love for all revelation of the word of god uh, grace of god according to the word and then he says as you learned from epaphras this one simple phrase but there is so much to it that word learned in greek means discipled it is not learning like uh, pastor shrini went to a school or like some people went into an engineering college to learn to become an engineer they never became an engineer here when it says learned it is to learn to become a disciple you know this is a church that believed in discipling this is not a church of mere believers but they were discipled by ifafres that's the real catch you know many people we are willing to be discipled by the lord jesus christ you know why he will never take advantage of you he will never you know set a bad example for you but to be discipled by a human element a human vessel a human instrument is the challenge you know why the closer you go you also see not only his strength not only you see his stars you also see his cars but yet this church was willing to be disciple by ifafres who was the local pastor there and they were amazing disciples that paul is testifying about them far and wide don't ask yourself a question which we began in the beginning of the time am i a believer you got to take a step further and ask yourself am i a disciple if you have attended the bible study one of the topics was on discipleship right tony who dealt with that i think Patrick did amazing you should listen to that it is there in the app that you know Nathan was talking about it is there in our youtube channel you should listen to that you know we ought not to become mere believers but we become disciples when you say you are a disciple you know what do you mean you become like jesus we all are examples but we are never a standard Hebrews chapter 11 is a, a chapter of examples Hebrews chapter 12 talking about Jesus he is our standard looking at an example if you miss the standard blame only yourself and this church look at it they had faith they had love for all they had a revelation of the grace according to the word and they were amazing disciples do they need anything more but yet paul said i am praying for you what are you praying paul Let's see what he prayed for chapter 9 verse 9 please He says for this reason what is that reason what i heard for this reason you have faith that means he's saying guys you have all the amazing ingredients you have faith you have love for all you have the revelation of the grace according to the truth you are not floating in the air and not only that you are discipled you are the disciples of jesus through ifafres amazing church yet i am praying for you what are you praying without ceasing and ask that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding all that paul prayed for the colossian church is that god would open our spiritual eyes that we will know that we will know that we will know what is the knowledge of his will i told you in my previous weeks his will becomes my purpose but now when you talk about purpose 
it is not talking about a generic purpose brother i am living for god's glory <laughs> easier said than done this is talking about a specific purpose each of us our purpose is predetermined by god and it is different to each other we are a body of christ eyes as its own role heart as its own role never seen but does an amazing job ask me i have overcome two heart attacks and i am still alive and i am serving god more than what i did before that is not only because of the grace but faith and a little common sense but listen here there is a purpose of god specific purpose which you need to know for me it is to bring the word to the nations but for you it could be a prayer intercession or maybe your you could be an encourager like barnabas was maybe you are an amazing worship leader like bobby is i'm telling you i travel different places but when i come here especially when bobby leads in worship not that others are not good bobby has been with us for years i personally was healed one of the times when bobby was leading i had a slip disc man i i couldn't even climb those stairs i needed somebody to help me this is after my surgery i am standing there worshiping not praying for healing just worshiping god as he was leading today the lord touched me since then man i have absolute no pain ask my wife if you have never had that you don't know i have been in sometimes in rooms all by myself i dropped a tablet and i couldn't bend to pick it up i couldn't even go down tablet is fallen down nobody to help me sometimes i had to call the room service to come and please pick the tablet they thought i'm gone crazy i knew what i went through that healing happened that day but what i am trying to tell you today is this purpose of god is what we live for and when you and i live for this purpose i tell you the blessing is amazing but the question comes how do we know the purpose of god into our lives how do i know the purpose of god into our church do what paul did what did he do he prayed he prayed he prayed for them without ceasing so i understand if paul prayed for the colossian church to know the purpose that's my duty that's what i pray for you every day and i pray that for myself every day and day by day it becomes clearer and clearer but there will always be impediments there will always be road blocks devil is not going to leave you that's the first end, uh, 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 what is that obstacle you will meet parable of sower first obstacle is the devil but then once you overcome the devil there will be he offended me she offended me offenses oh he didn't talk to me he didn't appreciate me he didn't acknowledge you know what is the loss not only yours but also of the kingdom the third one deceitfulness of riches some many are not lost in the possession of riches they have lost it in the pursuit of those riches worries but then when you become that good ground knowing your purposes and i pray today as i told you first week of jan we're going to have minimum 3 days of prayer in our office i want you to pray come for the prayer like never before i tell you people sometimes i feel sad to say it but i want to say it you can learn the commitment to prayer from people of the other faith than our lives flood fire famine they are there and they never complain and here we are we go to prayer thinking we are doing god and the pastor a favor no i'm encouraging you if colossian church which had all the faith all the love revelation discipleship it needed to know the purpose of god how much more you and i 2024 is coming prepare yourself to live for god's purposes enough is enough you should come to that point 
enough is enough i'm going to not be intimidated by the devil i'm not going to be offended by people i'm not going to be crushed by the worry or the pleasure i am going to rise up as a good ground are you ready not only 30 not only 60 a hundred and just imagine we as a church i shared our testimony in, in sri lanka they said pastor ini you're telling you do all these things in up in africa who funds you good question important question i said everything comes only from our churches dubai abu dhabi and belari church to their ability as they live in india they said are you serious i said yes they said how is it possible i said come and see i said we are not a mega church we wish and we pray and we work towards that because the more we grow the more kingdom grows because we understand our responsibilities and today we are a blessing into the nations and the main leader told me shreeni what you brought word to this 35 people is so blessing he said the entire nation needs to listen to your voice you need to come back again church for all nations is not a mere sermon church for all nations is a voice of missions to the world you all may have never preached a sermon but you are preaching it loud and clear people are hearing it you know why we have understood our purposes so today i encourage you pray for yourself without ceasing every day like paul prayed for the colossian church you may have faith you may have love you may have but what we need to top it all not that you don't need any of this because you have that you need this there is a gifting within you your time your talent your treasure is not only for your sake it is for the purposes of god amen we are different people we are heavenly citizens sojourning on earth stand up with me in prayer please rokola bashandiana rakala basandana rabala mandana thank you jesus thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah Oh, we worship you, Lord. We thank you. As you stand here, I want to tell you, no matter what others may have said, the devil may have lied to you. I want to tell you that you are very precious and God has a purpose embedded in you. But for you to fulfill it, number one, you need to know it. And how can you know it? Do what Paul did for the Colossian church. He said, God, I pray. He didn't prophesy alone. He prayed. So you go back home and say, God, I want to pray. Like Paul prayed for the Colossian church. Open my eyes, Lord. Let me understand the purpose. Some could be the legs who go. Some could be the heart that are pumping the blood for the legs to move. But 2024... We are going to live for the purposes of God. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm preparing myself with all my heart. I don't want to live that 30 percent life, neither 60, 100 percent for God. 100 percent for God. I'm sure we all agree with that. Amen. Everything in my time, in my talent, in my treasure. God as priority. Every eye be close. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able and I will sing the goodness of God. Oh, my life. Oh, my life, you have been faithful. 
All my life you have been so, so good oh, With every breath that I am able And I will say the goodness of God Your goodness keep running after me Your goodness is running after, is running after me Running after, it's running out, sing it again, yeah. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me one more time. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. for the Colossian church for yourself. Say, God, fill me with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual perspective. Unless you know it, you can never do it. Thank God for your profession. Thank God for your prosperity. Thank God for your businesses, your talent, but there is a greater thing of God's purpose. Your prayer can make a difference. Your preaching can make a difference. Your presence can make a difference. Your giving can make a difference. You are designed not just to be a blessing, to be a blessing into the nations. You can say, I am ready, O God. Knowing the purpose is the first step. But let's begin with that. And that happens when the Holy Spirit illuminates our eyes. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray what Paul prayed for the Colossian church to all of us and to all who are within the sound of my voice. I pray that we will not only have a knowledge of your work, but knowledge of your will. We do not want to be mere doers of the work of God,
but doers of the will of God. I pray that you will help us to know your will and then do your will. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for church for all nations and to everyone who is within the sound of my voice that we will receive a revelation of God's will, God's purposes into our lives and that we will live and we will die for that purpose of God into our lives. I want to thank you for this amazing time. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody who decided to live for God's purpose said a louder Amen. Amen. You can say an Amen there.